Hello, parents. Today, I will be offering a lower elementary math problem and video based off of a word problem that I have created using triple digit addition and also using the development of a 10 block strategy. This is a curricular component that I made for one of the students that I am currently teaching. And she is working on double and triple digit math as well as deconstructing numbers, carrying over time concepts, word problems, and reading comprehension. So here in this example, I have combined reading comprehension with math, with the ability to demonstrate the work, okay? So here, the question is, number six, Brandy had 870 butterflies to show at the fair. Sarah caught 450 more butterflies and gave them to Brandy. How many butterflies does Brandy have now? So this is how I would explain this numerical problem created and broken down using 10 block symbology. So with 10 blocks, you would typically would have a large square for a hundred block. You would have a line for your 10 blocks and you would have a single point for your one blocks. The one blocks go into the ones place. The 10 blocks go into the tens place and the hundred blocks go into the hundreds place. So the way that I would explain this problem to an elementary student is by breaking the problem down visually. So what I have here are eight hundreds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The circles symbolize the hundreds in this problem. And then I have seven eyes or lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my first number is 870. Okay. So seven tens equals 70. Eight hundreds equals 800. Eight tens and, excuse me, eight hundreds and seven tens make 800 together. Now for our second number, we have 450. 450. So you notice we have four hundreds here and we have five tens. Four hundreds equal 400, and five tens equals 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now, what I would ask my elementary student is, how many numbers do you have in the ones place for this problem? And the student will have to think very hard about what we have discussed with previous lessons on placement for math. So what would the number be in your regular problem? So if the student was aware that in the first number and in the second number, the ones place would equal zero. So there are no numbers in the ones place. This makes this problem relatively simple, even though we are using very large numbers when we are working with elementary students. The particular student who I have working on these problems is a third grader. And these may seem a bit advanced for that age range, but all of the principles involved in this learning strategy will be applied to third grade students moving into the fourth grade. So it is very important that students learn the concept of placement, number value, addition and subtraction, as well as learning how to show their work whether that be through a number line, a tape diagram, a tin board, 
or number blocks. All right, moving on. I would then ask the student, what numbers do you see in the tens place for this equation? And if the student was a bit confused, I would break it down and say, what is the number in the tens place for 870? Or what is the number in the tens place for 450? So if the student recalls the information that we had learned before about the placement of ones, tens, and hundreds, ones always on the far right, tens always in the center, hundreds to the left, thousands to the far left, if the number calls for such an expansion. So the student will be able to identify that there are seven tens in the first number and there are five tens in the second number. They can see that numerically, they can see it written in a word problem, and they can also see it spelled out in numerical symbolism, okay? So the student would have already been given a precursor as to this is, symbol means 100, this symbol means a 10, this symbol means a one. The student would also have the personal autonomy to create their own symbols, but they would have to remember to be very precise with the amount of symbols that they use and the kinds of symbols that they use as to not confuse themselves, as to not overlap, have too many or too few. All right, so this is an addition problem. So I would have the child identify. So from reading the problem, is this an addition or a subtraction problem? Now they could easily determine that by looking at the equation symbology in the, the numerical problem, or they could reread the question and understand that this is an addition. So if Brandy had 870 butterflies to begin, and if Sarah caught 450 more butterflies and gave them to Brandy, then how many does she have now? So that means that 870 plus 450 butterflies equals, well, let's do the math to see. So we know that we have 800s here. So we're going to go up. 900, 10 hundred. 1100, 1200. So we have 1200s present here. That would be spoken in numerical terms as 1200 or 1200. Okay. Now let's add our tens together. We know that we have seven here. So let's go up from there. Eight, nine, 10, which would be another 100, plus one, two. So if we have 12 hundreds with our hundreds, and we now have another hundred with our tens, 12 hundred plus 100 would be 1300. And the amount that we have left over would be 20. So our answer to 870 plus 450 is 1320 butterflies that Brandy would have had in her possession to show at the fair. So this problem can be explained in different ways, depending on how the student learns. The student may not be ready for triple digit subtraction or addition, but it can be done very, very succinctly with the students learning the place value and learning the symbolism, as well as learning to experiment with what ways make them feel comfortable with art making and helping them to find a strategy to show their work. Some students will be more comfortable with a number line. Some students will be more comfortable writing the problem down and then doing the math to the best of their ability. Some students are visual learners and will thrive off of the 10 block symbolism that can be created by the instructor or the student. The 10 board takes a little bit longer but depending on if your student knows how to count by fives or tens, it may go a little bit faster. My particular student still does this work by ones, breaking down blocks of 10 to get 
massive numbers. And sometimes that can take 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes out of our session just doing 10 board problems. So I hope that this has been a great information video as to how I would explain a triple digit addition word problem math lesson with an elementary student. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.